Welcome to another QSC QSYS Designer Software Tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to briefly cover some of the other features in the software and go over some of the DSP components that you'll find. Now, by now, you're probably familiar with the left and the right side pane. So we're going to start off in the schematic library here in the right side pane. This is where you'll find all of the DSP to add to your system, and to do so is as easy as clicking on the component that you want and dragging it into your schematic. Now there are three branches here. You have your audio components, control components, and layouts. Now the audio components are going to affect your audio. Some of these are simple, some of them have their own tutorial videos. Uh, we'll go through them real quickly right now. The audio player plays MP3s and waves that are loaded to your core. Audio streaming lets you connect to another device on your network to either send or receive a streaming signal. Uh, crossfader lets you fade between two channels. The crossover divides your signal into different bandwidths to distribute them to different loudspeakers. Uh, the delay will introduce a signal delay. Uh, the dynamics, you've got a lot of options here. You branches out, you can see things like a compressor, an expander, a, a peak limiter. These all let you adjust the signal dynamics, and this also has the gated and the uh, continuous ambient compensator, which will help take out background noise, and there's a separate tutorial on how those two work. Equalizers and filters branches out. This gives you a lot of things like you a uh, low-pass filter and a, a graphic equalizer, parametric equalizer, there's other filters, of course. The gain here gives you a gain adjustment to your signal. The gain ramp will create a timed adjustment to the gain. A meter will create an RMS meter for your signal wherever you attach it. The mixers, we've got a four different mixers in here, uh, and a few of these, like the, the gated automatic mixer and the gain sharing automatic mixer, we'll cover these in other tutorials. Let's see, public address lets you set up your paging system with the PA router and the virtual page station. The room combiner lets you create a system for a room that has removable air walls on it. This one also has its own tutorial. Router provides simple channel routing. A signal presence will let you use, uh, you can use it to detect the existence of an output signal. System mute will obviously mute the system. A lot of these are very self-explanatory. And then uh, test and measurement it offers a bunch of tools for testing your system. And we've got a tutorial on that as well. So, we are not really going to go into all of these components in this tutorial. We just want to show you where they are, and they're really easy to use as long as you know how to access them, drag them into your schematic, wire them together, open the control panels. You should be familiar with all of these things by now. If you ever find something you don't understand, they all have very detailed help files, so feel free to check out that database as well. One thing I would like to show you, though, is some of the ways that you can customize a component. So let's go over here and grab a matrix mixer and drag that into our schematic. One thing you can customize is adding control pins. If you go to the right side pane and take a look at the control pins menu, then you can toggle extra pins. For instance, if I check the uh, input one uh, mute control pin here, you'll notice that I've got a new bar on my component that I can wire with new pins. What these do is allow you to create unique logic and scripting interaction between components. So let's say that whenever this input goes mute, I want uh, a specific audio file to play. So what I could do is wire the control pin for this mute to the play button of that audio player, and then it would do it for me. So there's a lot of cool things you can do like that. Now, another way that you can customize components is within their properties, the properties of that actual component. Let's say that on this mixer, I want to change the inputs. Let's change the inputs from 8 down to 4. You can see that reflected. Now we have only four inputs. Let's change it uh, all the way up to 254. Boom, now we've got a whole lot of them. And you can see that if we open this up, let's zoom out a bit, that 254 is clearly more than we can even see on the screen. Like here, right here, we've got about 30 of them. And we've got this new bank up here that says input bank, which will allow us to toggle which set of 32 uh, inputs at a time we're actually even looking at. So even that aspect of the component will change based on what you've done to it. Let's turn this back into something manageable again. Let's make it 4x4. Four four. And uh, say goodbye to our input bank. Now another thing you can do for this mixer, for instance, is we can change it into something visually different entirely. Like let's go to this 2D matrix pattern and select yes. Now 
the visual representation of this component is completely different. And I'll show it to you. I gotta emu enter emulation mode here, hitting F6. Now this mixer, it's no longer controlled by those gain knobs, but you drag your input closer or farther away from certain outputs and that controls the volume that you want that input to go to. Ultimately, the point is that the component that you pull out of the schematic library might not look like what you end up changing it to. So you should really spend a lot of time looking at all the properties for your components so you can find out what it is that they're capable of.